Okay, well, welcome back to MSC 6765, Mechanical Behaviors of Materials. This week we're building on last week where we covered uh, elasticity in crystalline materials. This week we're looking at elasticity and viscoelasticity in amorphous and semi-crystalline polymers. Uh, this is actually the second time I've recorded it because the first time I went through it all, I uh, hit audio only. So I didn't have any of the slides. Um, so I'm a little frustrated right now. So if it comes across in my voice, it has nothing to do with you guys. So this week, we're breaking this mod breaking this topic down into a couple of different modules. First, since we have a, a bunch of, um, well, I'm going to say a bunch, we have a couple ISE and MA uh, and mechanical engineering students. So I'm just going to do a very brief kindergarten overview of polymer structure. Um, then look at the, some of the thermodynamics of polymer elasticity. Look at um, some continuum theories of polymer elasticity, specifically uh, the Neo-Hookian theory and a Mooney-Rivlin uh, model. And then we're going to do a lecture on the statistical mechanics theory and show that if we assume some kind of Gaussian statistics, we end up back with the Neo-Hookian theory and talk about some of the modifications from Gaussian to get some of the more highly nonlinear behaviors that we see in these materials. And we're going to have two modules on linear viscoelasticity, um, focusing on an, an overview of what it means to be a linear viscoelastic material and then look at some elementary viscoelastic models. Structure of polymers. This should be a complete and total review, um, but it never hurts, so bear with me for three minutes. Polymers, right? Long chains, carbon-carbon bonds, uh, in this case polyethylene. We have hydrogens coming off, right? typically sp4 hybridizations hybridized carbon, so we want to make four bonds in a te tetragonal, tetra not tetragonal, tetrahedral arrangement. But they're not just perfectly linear chains. In this case, this polyethylene chain, we see branching. Other polymers have significant degrees of cross-linking. That's what makes uh, vulcanized rubber vulcanized. You've got sulfur bonding, bonding that involves sulfur uh, side stuff. It's real polymer physicist, right? Sulfur side stuff. <laughs> you have uh, cross-linking bonds that involve sulfur compounds, uh, making a 2D or 3D network of these polymer chains. And the there can be a underlying orientations to the polymer chains, even if they are amorphous. Right? In this case, we see there's no preferred directionality to the chains um, in this 2D space, but in this picture we see the chains are much more likely to run east to west than they are north to south. And uh, this is, you can imagine, is going to give you a difference in properties pulling this way than pulling uh, this way. Right, and these arise is very much from uh, processing, right? You can imagine if you have injection molding or another melt processing, the chains are going to preferentially align along the flow direction. Um, or it can arise because of mechanical influences. We'll talk about uh, polymer drawing during the plastic, when we talk about um, plasticity of amorphous solids. And you get can get significant chain alignment during drawing, which will give you a big difference in properties along the aligned direction versus the uh, the unaligned direction. Another important cause of anisotropy and alignment is uh, crystallinity. If you have regions of high alignment in polymers without very large side chains, in this case we have polyethylene, you can form, you have regions where the uh, chains arrive in a um, 
pseudo kind of close packed arrangement. So here's the, the motif at each uh, lattice point. So it's basically a tetragonal, simple tetragonal where this, uh, these two motifs, this is the motif here, this corner and, and here. Um, and you get regions where you get the chain basically folds back and forth on itself and makes a, a crystalline region, but it's not perfect. It's a very highly defected crystal. You get crystalline regions um, interspersed with amorphous regions, places where you have imperfect uh, folding. You can have nearly crystalline amor amorphous regions that are highly correlated. Um, you can have uh, what's listed here is a fringed micelle where you don't have perfect alignment of the uh, um, of the uh, carbons they're they're offset from each other so these there's a lot of order and disorder you can have in even uh, highly oriented and we're going to stop there and pick it back up with uh, some Gaussian um, or the uh, thermodynamics, I'm sorry, of polymer elasticity.